But Jordan Davis has become the symbol of the rallying cry for all those fighting against this injustice. Joining me now is Jordan Davis's father, Ron Davis, along with the family lawyer, John Phillips. Thank you both for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Now, John, as a lawyer, what do you hope to see from the prosecutors in the next trial? And are you in, in going to be in touch with the prosecutors and giving your views from the family? Absolutely. We're going to be a little more vocal this time. You know, it, the prosecutor tried a good case if the law was fair, if the law was equal, and jurors viewed a white businessman and a young black teen on the same wavelength. But the scales are a little bit tipped against the young black teen, you know, the thug, the... The, it's okay to be a little bit afraid, a little bit of apprehensive in America of the young black teen, except it's really not. It, it, the, the thug here is a, is a white businessman named Michael Dunn, and it's not fair, and so we've got to do a little bit more. The prosecutors have to do a little bit more to rebalance that and show what a good kid Jordan was and what a, what a terrible neighbor and friend and ex-husband Michael Dunn was, and we just got to find a way to see that done. Esquire Phillips. You, you see it. This, you see it in, in bullying cases at school, where the school will trip over themselves to try to make sure the bully's rights to education are are, are dominant and forget the victim here. And that's exactly what's going on. You know, you've you've got to rehabilitate. We we don't want to, these teenagers winding up in the system forever. Right. But they did do something wrong, right. and they've got to they've got to pay the punishment. punishment. To the Final crime. thought. I want to get you in here. Oh. Attorney John Phillips with us as well. Man, you just hear that, John, and, and this family. And, and again, that's human nature. When you're a juror and you're, you're looking at a family and their emotions for months on end, you can't help but I mean connect in some way, right? You can't. You know, you've, you, no matter who the, the, cr the criminal is, the, cr the criminal defendant is, the victim's families are the ones that are truly suffering the most, they, especially in a murder case. You know, you can't bring them back. You know, you've just got to redefine justice. You've got to find some some way to, to make it right, and there's there's just no way to do it here. You know, you talk about, you know, human the human dynamic and relationships, how a jury relates to the family, to Jody Arias. Even the attorneys, Juan Martinez, Kirk Nurmi, Jennifer Wilmot, are you cognizant of that as an attorney? As you're speaking, are you looking for connection points where you know they're engaged with what you're saying and you change if not? Yeah. You do, and the more jurors, the more you have to juggle. And here, you know, they had 12 and then the alternates. With six, which most civil cases and, and non-capital cases are done, you can generally focus in on the people you need to focus in on. You can't get lost in that. You've got a production. You've got this whole trial, and you've got witnesses and all that to make sure that it's moving steadily. But you can tell the sympathetic eye of another human mm -hmm. relating to your client. Hey, real quick. Uh, one of the jurors mentioned how much they liked having jury questions at their disposal. It really helped them just cut right to the chase. Do you like that? I love it. We have it in Florida, and you can, le you can read what's going on and, and act accordingly when you get some good questions. John Phillips, it's not for any of us to say what's right or wrong. And I guarantee this is what I think when he tries to go talk to Dunn. Dunn, won't, Dunn doesn't even have the backbone to talk to a man, a full-grown man. Remember, he was picking on a pack of kids. Correct. Remember? Dunn was too much of a coward to call 911. I, he's not going to accept Ron Davis's call, that's for sure. It is a hopeless cause, but I... Until you walk him 454 days in Ron Davis's shoes, it's hard to see what he really, what he really wanted to achieve with that comment. If his girlfriend is a minor in the state of Florida, will we be able to hear her testimony? Great. Mm. Are minors coming to the witness stand? Wow. We got a Florida lawyer here. Yeah, absolutely. She's in fact they've they've already talked to her, and there's a controversy over you know Ben Crump, who's the attorney for the family, kind of like I am, Jordan Davis, who's not really a f part of the official proceedings, but he's already spoken with her, and she's going to be testifying at trial. So Just from Trayvon Martin's cell phone. So at the end of the day, John Phillips is with us, our attorney, providing expert analysis. Could the defense get a delay because they're not getting evidence in a timely manner? Is that where they're going to go with this at the end of the day? That's got to be the whole purpose. If you're just on the misconduct, why not go to the Florida bar? Why not go and try to work it out? Ultimately, the prejudice is four photos and a couple of text messages or a hundred text messages that you didn't have. Let's fix it and move on. Um, but what I would imagine is O'Mara and the crew are going to say now, well, 
if we didn't have that, what else didn't we have? So we want to look at the computer, look at the phone. We want to look more, you know, more thoroughly, do a complete investigation, and we need a continuance because we're prejudiced because of this misconduct. And he sees that he racks one in the chamber. Even at that point, the kids in the car all ducked, and the only one who said didn't duck was Jordan Davis. Why? As an attorney, what, what, do you, what do you make of that claim? And again, we should note here, police never found a weapon. Uh, no one in the car testified that there, that there was a gun. Since day one, Greg, this has been about victimizing the victim. And that's what they have to do. They have to do it with lies and mistruths. There was no gun. And we're tired of this whole gun theory. You know, they say we can't put in the character evidence of, of Jordan Davis or go too far into the character evidence of Michael Dunn, but you can portray him as this gun-toting thug, which he wasn't. And so, you know, we're tired of these. And it's, it started with Jose Baez and Mark O'Meara and now Robin Lemonitis on this case and now Corey Stroll. There's got to reach a point where attorneys are liable for the comments, even if they're relaying their clients. Ms. Truth. No, you know what, Frank? Truck. I'm not going to get off of it because Stay Trayvon would still you know, be I, here I if he had stayed in his race. car. Hold stay on. Stay in Let's your truck, Frank. Race, stay in the truck. John Phillips, do you think there's a problem with the law? Because Omarosa just said he shouldn't have gotten out of the car and followed him. But is there a law against getting out of the car and following him? There is a problem with the law, and there was a problem with, with all respect to John Guy and Bernie, there was a problem with you do a closing argument, you build a house. And you start with the foundation, and that foundation was manslaughter here. And the, the ma manslaughter simply pulling a trigger with intent. And that's where they should have started and built from there all the way up to murder, too. Okay. Uh, one other issue on the table, that the defense wants to prohibit certain words. They say they're prejudicial. Let me go through some of these, and John will get your take. Uh, the defense does not want the prosecution to use the words profile, vigilante, self-appointed neighborhood watch captain, wannabe cop, he got out of the car after police told him not to, and also using the terms that he confronted Trayvon Martin. No. It, that, how unusual is that for requests like that from the defense? It's fairly odd. You know, I file motion in limines all the time, motions in limine all the time, and you try to keep out, you know, ambulance chaser and, and those words that, that just tend to flare up a jury, profiling, things like that. I, 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 you can't get rid of every adjective and verb in the in the dictionary that's that may be counterproductive for you. So it's a little bit extreme, but hey, he's he's throwing it against the wall to see what sticks because he's trying to make this less of a race case, you know, less of the the theory that George Zimmerman was following Trayvon because he was African American and and making secondary guesses about that and so using you know, trying to get rid of terms like profiling um, is, is part of that, that tactic. What's, real quick, what's the likelihood that you will read the defense on this one? There was maybe one or two words that I think she may, she may limit, depending upon whether the door is open. But overall, I think it's going to be denied. Got it. Okay. John, thanks again. We're John, first of all, I, I want to talk about your clients, Jordan Davis's parents. I'm sure that going into the verdict, you prepared them for the possibility of guilty. You prepared them for the possibility of not guilty. But we're in this strange middle ground right now. Uh, a mistrial on one count, guilty on others. How are they doing right now? They're okay. You know, Jordan's birthday was yesterday. We had a private ceremony in there. You know, they, they, they understand what the jury's done. And, and we're, frankly, we can't wait to hear from the jury to see how many hung up you know, whether it was one or whether it was two and, and why they why they couldn't reach a decision. Yeah. And if to lawyers, Barack Shaw, John Phillips. John F Phillips, did you see that? He said our wedding song yeah, he's after he suspect he's arrested, not has not been found guilty of poisoning his wife in the Kool-Aid. He posts all this and it includes their wedding song. He's playing it up pretty hard. The Kool-Aid man would not say, oh, yeah, he'd say, oh, no, on this one. And our dream team is back for today from Los Angeles, former prosecutor Lonnie Coombs, and right here in Atlanta, HLN law enforcement analyst Mike Brooks, and of course, criminal defense and personal injury attorney John Phillips. Now, guys, when you hear the confession, all right, the police going through the confession with her, a lot of viewers are wondering, uh, why is this even going to trial? So, John, take us through. Why is this going to trial? You know, they've almost conceded the elements of murder. You know, the premeditation, all of that is, is, is clear. Right. The issue is the very rare insanity defense that, you know, sometimes people think that that happens a lot. It, it really doesn't. It's it's one to two percent or less of cases. Right. Um, I think like oh, point one. But 
that's the issue is whether she could have formulated any in, any logic in, into this or whether she was just kind of off the just locker. gone john phillips uh given what we've heard from uh j the juror valerie so far what we know about inside the jury room does it uh, is it your interpretation that those three who were not willing to vote for a conviction believed that jordan that that uh that jordan davis uh, I mean, i'm sorry uh that, that uh the defendant was actually threatened by a gun or that he just possibly believed he was threatened by a gun that's the standard they believed through which he was impeached over and over and over again but they gave the benefit of the doubt to the caucasian businessman and they i guess in their mind's eye some of these jurors said yeah maybe i could see a black how much today. of that doubt do you think as a courtroom professional uh was expanded as a result of that uh, judge's instruction that I just read about stand your ground people don't understand stand your ground and for that language to even be in the jury instruction confuses people and it inflames people and so certainly that's the issue and as Ron said meet force with force there was never even a car doors worth of force put on Michael Dunner's vehicle kick them out you can't kick I've someone out for based on race I've gender never discrimination heard of that. they'd have to show that they were a, an absolute nuisance here which but in the even case then, Phillips you can't just kick somebody out of town that's not the law you can uh, bring a trespassing or a nuisance claim against them uh, disturbing the peace for having wild parties or whatever they think is going to happen or they can uh, maybe cite a film crew truck that's in the wrong place but you cannot legally as far as I know kick people out of town you can't you can get that nuisance injunction but they can legislate them out of town they can control permitting and licensing of where they can film which may get because, rid of you know, them pretty quick. I don't quick. want to give away effects and injures everybody else. Exactly. I mean, that's a problem, John. It's a problem, and, and you know, he'll have punitive damages, and the guy probably runs around with a $10,000 insurance policy or nothing. And so yeah. the pe people that he hurt are going to have a serious lifetime of consequences, medical bills, collection agents, you know, all of that stuff. Absolutely. I see for the him. problem with the stand your ground laws. It's based upon a reasonable person standard, and the only witness to the reasonable person whether that person was being reasonable was now killed mm. in every one of these cases and that's that's a major problem